It's midday, there's some empty takeout cups in the frame, and Asmongold is live on Twitch. Sup y'all, it's me. It's your boy Asmongold. He's giving his opinion on the news of the day, and chat is feeding into it. Entertainment's a waste of time, Bill. Don't you know that? You've been wasting people's time for 30 fucking years. What are you sitting here getting pissed off about because people are watching, watching Twitch? And after a brief detour into the wild world of Reddit... Asmon Jack-O-Lantern Challenge. What is... Why? It's time to log into World of Warcraft. World first hogger, here we go. Yes, dude. Or at least it used to be World of Warcraft. Nowadays, the one true king isn't just playing WoW. He's trying MMOs of all kinds. Come on, kill him, kill him, come on, come on, please, please, please. Point one. He is single-handedly the biggest tastemaker in the genre because his fans can count on him to always offer his unfiltered opinion, even if it's a negative one about their favorite game. How is it that the game designers are unable to come up with better solutions than a bunch of angry neckbeards on a forum? He hasn't quit WoW. If anything, WoW has kind of quit him. Ah, Blizzard! Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Is this a joke? But he's continued to grow in popularity, and he showed that he's more than just a WoW streamer. And as his fans come out in droves for whatever game he's playing that day, Asmongold isn't slowing down. And if you don't like that, well, it is what it is. And people call me a cuck. And you know what? That's fine with me. I always say what I think. Before he became the one true king of World of Warcraft, the streamer you now know as Asmongold made his living at the IRS and Sam's Club. Back then, and to this day, he resides in Austin, Texas, where he lives with and supports his mom. He went to school to get a business degree and was contemplating law school until he decided to focus on World of Warcraft. A friend introduced him to the game when he was 16 in July 2006, and within a year, he convinced his mom to buy the first expansion, and pretty soon, he was hooked. I didn't know what to expect. All I knew was that I was going to play all night and all day, as much as I could, as much as possible. It didn't take long for the game to become his obsession, spending hours grinding away and leveling with friends, on his own, or even with his mom. And so my mom and I went together into the Burning Crusade, into Hellfire Peninsula, and we did all of the quests together at the very beginning. And we leveled up, and we got all that stuff done. And in 2009, Asmongold uploaded his first World of Warcraft video to YouTube, a five-minute recording of a warrior soloing Hakkar in glorious 480p. In the early days, like a lot of WoW creators, his channel was mostly game guides and how-tos, which he was motivated to do after finding that a lot of what was out there wasn't as informative as he would have liked. This your boy Asmongold, and today we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about something big. I've wanted to make a video about this for a while, and I actually did, but it sucked, so we're redoing it. Hopefully it won't suck as much. It's about how to get achievements. Not, not how to get any specific achievement, but the mindset that it takes and the way you need to set your goals. As his YouTube channels began to grow and started to see significant subscriber numbers, streaming became the obvious next step for Asmongold, and he set up his stream in 2014. I moved over to making streaming my main platform. I feel like streaming in a lot of ways has a lot more growth potential than YouTube does in terms of like the ceiling. At first, he struggled with finding a consistent schedule and building his audience. The Asmongold struggle right at the very f***ing beginning of streaming, that was a grind. That was a f***ing grind. Then he hit a roadblock when he got suspended on Twitch after making an offensive joke about Hurricane Katrina. And a lot of the displaced people from Hurricane Katrina went to my high school and they would all wear the same t-shirts and they were f***ing animals. Every single one of them. Honestly, 
The Hurricane could have done a better job. After some discussion with a Twitch employee, he was able to start again and even became a partner. His following grew steadily as one of the only WoW streamers that was able to capture the audience's attention with his knowledge of lore, gameplay, raids, and his constant candid conversation. Like anybody that does like the chewing tobacco, like how the f do you start doing that? Like, I understand, like, you get addicted to nicotine and then it is what it is, but how do you, like, what's the first time whenever you see somebody doing that and they, they spit out this disgusting brown glob that looks like microwaved cat shit and you think to yourself, that's what I want to do. That's me. From the beginning, Asmongold has been unashamedly himself. He was the OG WoW nerd in his messy room who played and loved the game for all the same reasons as his audience. People fell in love with his streams because he was real and said the things that they were thinking. But sometimes, that realness got him into trouble. There was never a subject too spicy, too normy, or too controversial for him to share his take on. Whenever I say things like, I don't care about girls having OnlyFans and stuff like that, I could very easily say the, the popular thing that people say. I could very easily say, I think girls should be able to do it, but I wouldn't be comfortable with my girlfriend doing it. That is the popular thing to say, but I don't say that because it's not what I believe. And people call me a cuck. And you know what? That's fine with me. In many ways, Asmund blazed the trail for what is now the archetypical super streamer. He was able to pair chilling, eating, grinding solo content in-game, and talking shit with the kind of constant social commentary we've now come to expect from the platform. Asmund views himself as a personality streamer and believes that the gameplay is almost secondary to the commentary he provides. The today is no ordinary stream. Today! Ladies and gentlemen, the doors to Castle Nazaria will not open themselves! He's been known to fire off an opinion with little thought, and as his platform has grown, so has his internet megaphone. The same megaphone that's gotten him in trouble. I had no problem talking about issues that I really felt like were, were bad. I called out the entire community whenever Alinity had that thing happen, and everybody was against me. Recently, a tweet referencing the Sinatra sexual violence allegations landed him in hot water. And then there was his take that Shadowlands prequel novel writer Madeline Rue had engaged in reverse racism in a series of tweets, as well as his refusal to stop using an ableist slur that was a big point of contention online. I think there's nothing wrong with saying the word ret and I think that the people that get mad about it are just fucking stupid. And I'm gonna keep saying it until they tell me that I can't. If I if I say it, they'll ban me, right? It, now, obviously, if if I if I can't say it, I won't say it. But until then, I'm gonna keep saying it because I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And I think the people that are getting mad about it are just stupid. But most of all, Asmongold is known best for his critical views on Blizzard overall and the specific gameplay and lore gaps in World of Warcraft. Asmongold has always loved the game. He's given most of his adult life to it. But as more expansions have been released, it seemed like it was getting harder and harder to keep loving. When Warlords of Draenor got released, Asmongold felt that Blizzard was creating a barrier for any new players looking to play. He felt that the expansion was going out of its way to remove ways to make friends in-game. Now I can do 100 Battlegrounds and I can be top damage and I can just never die and it could be super awesome and I can just kick ass, but I will never have as much fun as I did, you know, killing the Yeti with, with my friends, you know, hanging out, having fun. And I think that the game has streamlined so many different aspects that it's hard to really make those connections. His vocal opinions led to a complicated relationship with Blizzard, with very public and heated clashes. Who do you think contributes more to the toxicity in the game? Do you think it is the person who streams the game? or the person who literally makes the systems in the game. Have I been toxic in the past? Absolutely. Have I done some things that are toxic? Absolutely. I take no, uh, I don't hide from that. In fact, I talk about it regularly. It's who I was. And in a way, it's still who I am. I don't pretend. However, do you want to know what real pretending seems like? It seems like taking slash spit out of the game 
while you let people say the N-word. You don't care about harassment. You don't care about toxicity. You care about protecting the feelings of your whales. At BlizzCon in 2018, Asmongold was told he could not be in another player's stream and was asked to leave the stage. I went to stream with Esfon and they told me that I couldn't be on camera with him. And like, as soon as I walked up there, they were like, there was like three fucking dudes or there was one guy that was like really mad and he was like this. I couldn't hear what he was saying, right? But he wasn't fucking happy about it. And they came up there and they, they told me I had to leave. So I, I don't know, I, I didn't like that at all. And things have only gotten worse in recent years during Battle for Azeroth and Shadowlands. I feel like a lot of the Blizzard developers genuinely do not play World of Warcraft the same way that their players do. And I think that's evident by the amount of changes that the developers add into the game. that are either changes that have been asked but for by the very highest degree of PvP players or PvE players, because those are the people who have the ear of the developers, or on the other side, changes that are just completely antithetical to what an MMO is supposed to be. The mounting issues with the game have been tough for Asmund to cope with. More and more, it felt less like the game he grew up on. I've only really ever cared about this game. I just, I don't see it getting better. It's just somehow getting worse every single time. I'm just tired of it. The state of California filing a lawsuit against Activision Blizzard really brought everything into perspective for Asmund, making it hard to want to stream WoW or even play music from the game while streaming. Really affected me. It's, it's, it's bothered me, to be honest. I feel like as a, uh, you know, I've almost 25 years now, I've played Blizzard games. I started in Warcraft 2. And uh, to read this, uh, you feel betrayed. You feel like those moments and those experiences that you've had uh, now are under the context of these things happening at the expense of other people. And they feel less pure and less real and less, uh, less just good. And uh, it makes the memories tainted and it makes the experience tainted as well. In recent years, Retail WoW has tended to flounder. But for years, many community figures have pushed for a WoW Classic server to let them relive their early WoW glory days. And Asmongold was one of the biggest voices leading that charge. And though Blizzard fought back... Have you ever thought about adding servers for previous expansions as they were then? No. And by the way, you don't want to, that, to do that either. You think you do, but you don't. Eventually, the scene got what they wanted, a vanilla server. And Asmongold's stream popped off. Well, I'm in, I'm in! I, I clicked it, quick, 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 quick. This is it, boys! This is f***ing it, man! Alright, let's go! I welcome you all to the very beginning of our glorious guild. The guild is called Olympus. Because we are literal gods. Day one of streaming Classic WoW, Asmongold hit 263,720 viewers at one time. It was like the release was made for him. You do not fight with honor, Bargoth. But hey, at least you fight to the death. Over the years, Asmongold has seen streamers come and go, and he's always been thankful for the level of success he has achieved. But success hasn't really changed him. He's still the same dude, sitting in a messy room with the lights off, talking about games. Asmongold has found that living simply and being able to support his mom is what makes him happiest. I live the most extravagant, great life I could possibly ever imagine. I'm surrounded by my friends that I spend time with daily. I have a great thing that I do uh, with my streams and my, my videos. I, I consider myself incredibly lucky and I'm very passionate about that in many ways. And he doesn't just spend his money on his family. In October 2020, one of his goals became a reality when he decided to put his business degree to use and create One True King, a content organization he put together with some of his regular streaming buddies and a few newbies. I announced my new org, OTK, One True King, with uh, Rich Campbell, Tips Out, s and Mizkif. I still cannot even believe that it's happened. I can't believe the amount of feedback and great 
support that we've gotten. It quickly became one of the biggest streaming orgs with over 25 million hours watched. And OTK wasn't the only change in the past year. Through OTK, Asmund has been doing more on his streams, like playing Fall Guys and having a Dungeons and Dragons campaign with his fellow streamers. Recently, he's shifted focus from WoW to Final Fantasy XIV, a big change for someone who has almost exclusively been interested in playing WoW for the last 15 years. I'm not quitting WoW. I uh, really enjoy WoW as well. But it's been great to be able to play something different and to have a different perspective on the game. I'm just having a good time. I'm having, I'm enjoying myself. It's fun. I'm playing the game off stream and uh, just trying to do uh, what I want to do. And I uh, miss that a lot. Yes! Yes! Come on! Come on! Get him! Kill him! Kill him! Yes! 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 Asmongold continues to be the MMO everyman. Even if he isn't focusing on World of Warcraft right now, he's still bringing his expertise and opinions to Final Fantasy XIV. The social structures in the game are a little bit off-putting. Uh, some of the ways that people are very pushy and evangelize their game is a little bit off-putting as well. However, I do really just want to play a good game. Though he's playing a new game, you can bet that you'll always be able to find Asmund doing what he's always done. Sitting in a dark, messy room, writing, questing, and hanging out on stream. Alright, ready? Here we go. HOLY SHIT! HOLY SHIT! ARE YOU KIDDING ME, DUDE? ARE YOU f***ING KIDDING ME, DUDE? OH MY GOD! OH MY F***ING GOD, DUDE! WHAT A DAY! There may have been a time when World of Warcraft was the main event, and Asmongold was the vessel that was carrying one of the most beloved games of all time to its loyal following. But that time has come and gone. The one true king has outgrown any one game. A lot of people watch me for WoW, etc. But if I play another game, I still have a large audience of people who like seeing that too. And I think that's awesome, and I really appreciate that. That's so f***ing amazing. I feel so lucky for that, honestly. He's the voice for MMO players, grinders, trolls, Twitch OGs, and React Andes everywhere. A true Twitch tastemaker. And there's no telling where he'll go next. I've enjoyed myself a lot, and I look forward to doing a lot more. So until next time, boys. Peace. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.